the two witnesses. Who are these two mighty men of God? Whoever they are, you can be sure of this. Anyone today who is claiming to be one or both of these witnesses is not because the ministry of the two witnesses has not even begun yet. So if they are in the ministry and claim they are one of the two witnesses, or again, if they claim they're both of them, they are not because the ministry of the two witnesses has not even started yet. We'll be reading Revelation chapters 10 and 11. Verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with the cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So scripturally speaking, a thunder is new spiritual truth never revealed before until it is revealed. And in the demons and the devil, it is scary like a big loud thunder. Verse 5, And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer or better translation, no more delay. Verse 7, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Now in verse 7, there's the principle of duality, because this word translated angel means messenger. It's translated messenger when it's talking about John the Baptist, and it's translated angel when talking about a spirit-composed angel. But it simply means a messenger. So, when individuals read verse 7, they think the seventh spirit-composed angel, who has the seventh trumpet, at the second coming of Christ, when that's blown, then the seven last plagues are poured out. Now, that's true, but the seventh angel or messenger would be the men God has over his final era of the church. And they're the seventh angel angel or messenger and they lift their voice up as a trumpet and sound it for three and a half years before the seventh spirit composed angel blows his trumpet at the second coming of Christ. Verse 8 And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book and he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. So whatever these seven thunders are, like the two witnesses' ministry, they have not yet been revealed. So anyone claiming that a book they wrote is the seven thunders or whatever, that's not necessarily true because the seven thunders have not yet been revealed because these seven thunders are what the two ministry or two, the ministry of the two witnesses are based on, is these thunders. And notice too in verse or chapter 10 before we move on to chapter 11 is that the little book in the angel's hand was open. Open mean it's not concealed, it's not sealed, hidden in symbols and a veil of darkness. It's plain language. So, number or 11 verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. So again, whatever these seven thunders are, it helps the ministry of the two witnesses to measure 
the temple of God being the church, the altar being the ministry, and them that worship therein are the lay brethren. Verse 2, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Verse 3, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Sackcloth denotes repentance. The ministry of the two witnesses is repent because the Lord Jesus is returning soon. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, better translation, lampstands, standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, Fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord is crucified. And when you let Jeremiah 23, 14 interpret it, Jerusalem is spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah, where the two witnesses' ministry takes place in Jerusalem. Verse 9, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer or allow their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets, notice it says prophets, not prophetesses. So these are two men. Two prophets, these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Tormented them by speaking the truth. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, notice the time. It isn't three days, it's three and a half days. Because if it was three days, that's the only sign of the Messiah. So that's why it's three and a half days. The spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand. And the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe was past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. 15. And the seventh angel sounded. So there's the seventh angel with the seventh trumpet during the day of the Lord. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. So you notice at the completion of the two witnesses' ministry, the seventh trumpet angel blows at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's cover Zechariah chapter 4, because that also talks exclusively about these two men in the end time called the two witnesses. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 1. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are on the top thereof. So he's seen the seven candle menorah that represents the seven eras of God's church. Verse 3, And two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl, and the other on the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, 
saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice, and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord that run to and fro through the whole earth. In the book of Revelation, Jesus is pictured as a lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. Each horn, one for each era of the church, and each eye is an eye over each church era. Also, verse 10 mentioned a plummet. A plummet is a measuring device that measures whether a thing is plumb or not. Plumb means it's horizontally level as well as vertically level. And recall in chapter 10 of Revelation, when the two witnesses consumed, ate the little book, then they were properly given the measuring stick in verse 1 of chapter 11, and now they could properly measure God's church. Same here with the plummet. Verse 11, Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Because at the time of the ministry of the two witnesses, they are the only two men on earth standing for the Lord and everyone else is getting destroyed by the beast that sits in the temple claiming he's God for the final three and a half years of the seven-year period. So these two men, we don't know who they are. We will know who they are when they come on the scene, but you'll know these men not by what they look like, not by their type of personality or what affiliation they have with such and such denomination. You'll know them because they proclaim the word of God boldly and they don't compromise, and they will not back down. They have the anointing on them. They, uh, the scripture says how they, they pour out the golden oil on themselves. They're the olive trees. Olive trees exude oil that in the Bible represents the anointing of the Spirit of God on them. So these two anointed men, their ministry has not yet happened, but you can be sure of this, when there's a man in Jerusalem sitting in the third temple claiming he's God, and you see two other men opposing him, those are the two witnesses.